The Alberta election is really starting to piss me off. Like everybody in Wild Rose Country, I tuned into the leaders debate that played on Thursday and I can honestly say that I was very much, very much less than impressed with multiple of the provincial leaders. You have to excuse me, my cat messed with my tripod, that's why the camera moved a bit. But anyway, like I said, I tuned into the provincial debate and found myself very much turned off of several of the leaders running for office, running to be Premier of Alberta. I found this entire election to be quite embarrassing and quite sad. And it's mainly because of Jason Kenney and Rachel Notley. I find they spend way, way too much time and attention and resources attacking each other rather than actually trying to get across what they're going to do should either Jason Kenney get a mandate to become Premier or not get re-elected. Now early, early on in the election there were two cards that showed up one from the NDP, one from the United Conservative Party. I'm going to show them on screen and talk about them right now. So here we go. All right. So here we have the first, the first election card. And this is the one from the NDP's Twitter. So as you can see here, it has attacks on the United Conservative Party about effectively racism and homosexuality, white supremacy. Well, they keep saying, we're fighting for you. Talking about diversification of the economy, improved health care, flood mitigation, and knocking on some doors. While apparently the United Conservatives are white supremacists, hate the gay community, hate women. Nazis, well, I guess reeks of Aryan undertones, and racism made national news. So now we move to the United Conservatives card found on their Twitter. Now this is a day, a five-day breakdown of the election. On day one, they said they campaigned for jobs, economy, pipelines. Day two, campaign on the Carbon Tax Repeal Act. Day three, campaign on an equal a referendum for equalization, day four, countering foreign attacks on Alberta, and day five, they campaigned on getting a fair deal for Alberta. And they f say that on all five days, all the NDP did was attack Jason Kenney, proving that they aren't, they are just as bad as the NDP at not really um, just relying on personal attacks rather than what they will actually do, which is frustrating that the two parties that are likely going to lead suck. Now that we've come back from that, I want to get into the debate. Here is honestly how I felt about this debate. You had Kenny and Notley who were looking at each other, trying to, and effectively, one would attack, the other and the other would retaliate. There may be a couple intermissions where they may actually say what they would do, what they have done, what they should do, and then they go back to attacking each other. JC Kenny would look at Rachel Notley and say, your government has buggered up the economy, the Alberta economy, you've hurt the oil industry, you don't have pipelines. Notley would fire back when Kenny was a federal a federal minister in Stephen Harper's cabinet. You didn't build pipelines, you didn't help the economy. All he did was go in circles, nothing was resolved, and quite frank quite frankly. I don't understand who, unless you lived in that province that we're going through the last four years, I don't know 
if you would be drawn to either of these people, either of their parties, either of their politics. It, I don't understand why somebody, at least, who hasn't lived in Alberta would even want to vote for either of them. If you did, I could fully understand why you would want to vote out the NDP if you lived through their reign. I fully understand that, why you might go UPC. But if you didn't, if as somebody who might not have been there, watching it as somebody who has since left the province and is trying to look at it at, from the eyes of somebody who may not understand Alberta politics, I don't know why you'd want to vote for either of them after this display. Then there was the liberal leader, David Kahn, who, here's my impression of him, might as well have been waving his hands like this going, I'm here too, I'm here too. That was the extent of his involvement in the debate. I don't think he really said anything of note, anything noteworthy. The only thing I remember, and it's because he said it so many times that in my ears bled, was that I'm the only one up here that's a constitutional lawyer. And this was talking about using the Constitution to, I believe, either force a pipeline to get built, as well as force uh, a reconsideration on... Sorry, this time it's my feet that moved the tripod. But anyway, either forcing the con using the Constitution to force a pipeline... To, for Alberta to get product to Tidewater or to force a reconsideration of the formula on uh, equalization payments. I keep wanting to say uh, transfer payments, but that is something different. It's equalization payments. So if you hear me say transfer payments, that's what I mean, equalization. Just FYI. But anyway... That's all, that's, all I, that's all I felt he truly contributed. Then there was Stephen Mandel of the Alberta Party, a party that I would consider myself voting for. However, he didn't have much of a capturing personality, so he was quite forgettable on stage. So while he may have presented decent ideas and, for what I felt, stayed out of these personal attacks until he needed to respond... But because his personality is kind of milk toast and not really, didn't really have the, he came off with the charisma of, of effectively, you know, a plastic cactus, if you ask me. So he didn't really stand out at all. There's nothing that realistically you could, I felt would stand out if you would want to vote for him. So it, I made this analogy once during, uh, one of the Ontario elections, and I believe it was when Kathleen Wynne actually won her election. This, uh, I want to say 2013, 2014, it was like watching three clowns on stage in a dancing competition, but nobody could dance. Nobody had rhythm. And it was sad. It was sad. To see a province that seems to be not get any real support when its industry is in trouble, its main industry is in trouble. To not have options that you can get really excited about. It's just, it just sad. And why, I'll say it I, till I'm blue in the face, why the NDP continues to try to run on these social issues, attacking the conservatives on gay rights when it's a debate they've won they won decisively regardless of whatever presence the religious right has in the conservative movement they are never going to be able to win on campaigning against gay rights it doesn't matter People are repulsed by it anyway, being anti-gay. The left won on that case. On this issue, the left won. And it's like they don't realize they won. It's frustrating. I don't understand why we need to keep re-litigating, to use a court term, or to keep having this fight. We won on this issue. Time to move on. 
For years I've been saying the left needs to actually start to be scrappy and to start fighting back. They, for too long they would take the high road. This is not what I mean. This is not what I mean when I said needed to fight back. What I mean is push for your policies. If you think your way to get a pipeline is more efficient, fight for your policy. Don't try to drag the other person down by calling them racist, sexist, homophobe, transphobe, or whatever word I'm missing right now. And that's what I feel Rachel Notley is. We just witnessed the Democrats in the United States a couple of years ago lose because they ran a campaign similar to this. But anyway, I truthfully, if I was still in Alberta, I have no idea who I would vote for because we have Notley, who I don't feel deserves a second term based on her performance on a carbon tax she didn't, a carbon tax she never ran on, it was executed poorly. I, my entire time in Alberta, I knew nobody that got a rebate. All we ended up doing is paying more for essentials. Jason Kenney, while the party may be potentially be a better choice, I I just can't get behind him. He seems like an Ottawa politician that didn't fight for Alberta when uh, the temporary foreign worker program was being revamped and uh, it hurt businesses. So now he seems like a guy who's really trying to pander to the Alberta populace when he campaigned. He made it very clear that he was touring in his pickup truck. And I always made the joke that, what, is he going to tour listening to country music wearing a cowboy hat, cowboy boots, blue jeans? Because th that's pretty epic pandering and it's quite disgusting. It might, it's pandering and it's quite patronizing if you ask me. His, now, like I said, his policies might help the province better, but I don't know if he's the guy to pull it off. And like I said, the liberals in that province are... You look up irrelevant in the dictionary and you will probably see the logo of the Alberta Liberal Party. They may have been, if I'm not mistaken, the first party to govern the province, but that was over 100 years ago. I'm surprised that party's still around. Like I said, Khan might as well have been on stage saying, I'm here too, guys. I'm here too. And then there's the Alberta Party, which I don't know if they're going to get through the get through the white noise left by everybody else. But either way, hopefully, come the election, when Alberta ends up at least with a competent government that can get the oil industry and the province's economy back on track and not end up quite like Ontario where it seems like there's cuts and cuts and cuts with no plan. But here's hoping. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please like it. If uh, you don't, well, there's the thumbs down. If you agree, disagree, or just want to continue the conversation, please leave a comment down below. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook, Minds, and Twitter. Links will be down below in the description. Thank you again. Have yourself a good day. Until next time.